Hello and welcome. I'm Paula Misen and you are watching Hornbill TV. Leonardo DiCaprio is back on the market after quietly splitting from his girlfriend, model Camila Morone. Insiders close to the Hollywood A-lister have said the pair grew apart after seven years and called it a day earlier this summer. Ended their relationship over the summer. There are no bad feelings between them. It just came to a natural conclusion. Of all the women the actor has dated, including supermodels Giselle Bunchen, Barra Faley, and actress Blake Lively, none of them have been over the age of 25 when they were together. Giselle Bunchen dated Leo for five years until 2005 when she was 25. Barra Faley was with the actor for the same amount of time and they split in 2009 when she was 25. Blake Lively dated him for five months when she was 23. Leo Tan briefly dated model Erin Hederton, who was 22, and model and actress Donny Garn for a year before it ended when she was 21. Kelly Rohrbach dated Leo in 2016. It ended when she was 25. He was with Danish model Nina Agdal for a year until she was 25. During the relationship, Camilla was regularly mocked by trolls, including one who told her the romance with Leo would be over when you're 25. Camilla said, at the time, there's so many relationships in Hollywood and in the history of the world where people have large age caps. I just think anyone should be able to date who they want to date. In a first, India to get its first vaccine against cervical cancer tomorrow, September 1. The most awaited vaccine will be launched by the Union Minister of State, Independent Charge, Science and Technology Jitendra Singh on Thursday. The cervical cancer vaccine, quadrivalent human papillomavirus vaccine, is developed by the Serum Institute of India and the Department of Biotechnology. According to Dr. N.K. Arora, chairperson of the COVID Working Group, National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization said that it is an exciting experience to launch a Made in India vaccine. He said it is very effective and prevents cervical cancer because 85% to 95% of cases cervical cancer is because of this particular virus and this vaccine is against those viruses. A lot of sublineages of B2 overtook. Somewhere in April, B4 and B5 also came. And now we find during last two weeks or so, B275 is the dominant uh, lineage which is circulating. So there is rapid change in sublineage which are circulating in the country. Now, on one side, when we look at the clinical behavior of these viruses and the severity profile it is not worrying the disease is mild a lot of people are getting uh, infection fever for two three days cough and then they become all right in about a week's time so overall uh, we feel that currently whatever virus is circulating it is not able to cause severe disease and there are two important things in this direction one is that most of the adult population, almost all the adult population is immunized at the moment. And the second is that most of the population has already been exposed naturally. So this hybrid immunity is helping us to see that the disease severity is mild. It is very exciting and I must say it makes us very happy that our daughters and granddaughters will now be able to get this much awaited vaccine. In fact, this was one of the last major vaccine which was to be introduced in the program. And now a Indian vaccine is available. And uh, we hope that it will be uh, launched in the national immunization program for nine to 14 year old girls. It prevents, it is very effective and prevents cervical cancer because cervical cancer 85 percent times or 90 percent times it is because of this particular virus and this vaccine is against those viruses so if we give it to our young children uh, daughters uh, they are protected from the infection and consequently 20 30 years later 
All India United Democratic Front AIUDF Chief and Lok Sabha MP Badruddin Ajmal on Wednesday said that the Assam government should stop its bulldozer drive against madrasas in the state, adding that if needed, it will go to the Supreme Court. We can't accept the Assam government's bulldozer drive against the madrasas in the state. It should be stopped. If necessary, we will move to the Supreme Court or any other against it, Ajmal said. AIUDF Supremo further said that the BJP RSS are targeting Muslims. देखिए हमारा ये कहना है कि मदरसों के अंदर भाईचारगी, अमनो अमान, प्यार मोहब्बत, देश की मोहब्बत पढ़ाया जाता है। ईमानदारी से सच्चाई से रहना, हिंदू मुस्लिम भाई भाई की तरह रहना। घरों में बाजारों में हर जगह ईमानदारी से रहना मदरसों में सिखाया जाता है अभी स्कूल है हजारों स्कूल है आसाम में लाखों में भी हो सकता है अगर उनमें एक दो तीन में कोई इंडिविजुअल कोई आदमी गलत काम करता हो पकड़ा जाता है तो सरकार उसको पकड़े उसको जो करना है मैंने पहले भी कहा कि कानून के हिसाब से उसको जो सजा देना है सरकार उसको दे हमें उसमें कहने की कोई बात नहीं है एक मिनट प्लीज तो जो मदरसों को गिराने की बात है ये हमारा कहना इस मामले में सरकार से कि आप लोग इसको थोड़ा संडे दिमाग से सोचिए ये मदरसे उस पूरे इलाके में बहुत अच्छा काम करते हैं अब जाइए जिन मदरसों जाकर में मदरसे नहीं है वहाँ के बच्चे आवारा मिलेंगे आपको मुसलमानों के बच्चे पढ़े लिखे नहीं है कुछ तो पढ़े कम से कम कोई भी मजहब ये सब बुराई का काम नहीं सिखाता अगर एक दो तीन मदरसे में आपको मिला है तो वो तीन को उठाइए उनके साथ में दस को उठाइए हमें कोई आपत्ति नहीं है दोषी ठहरते हैं उनको जो सजा देना है दे दीजिए जो सजा देना है लेकिन इसका मतलब ये नहीं है कि मदरसे को या पब्लिक प्रॉपर्टी है बहुत से मदरसे तीस साल में बीस साल में चालीस साल में एक एक रुपया दे के लोगों ने धान दे के चावल दे के ये मदरसे बने हैं तो इसको एक दिन में आप तोड़ देंगे ये तो नाइन साफी की बात है उसके खिलाफ इंक्वायरी कराइए अगर पूरा मदरसा उसके अंदर इन्वॉल्व है जरूर उसको भी तोड़ दीजिए हमें उससे कहना नहीं है लेकिन इन्वॉल्वमेंट मिले तो सही अगर कोई भी इसमें गलत आदमी पकड़ा गया है हमें उससे कोई मतलब नहीं है गवर्नमेंट उसके साथ जो करना चाहे करे Authorities in Assam on Wednesday demolished a madrasa in the Bungaigao district after allegations that its premises were being used for terror activities. This is the third madrasa to be raised by the Assam government following the arrest of 37 persons, including the imam and madrasa teachers, on charges of being linked to terror outfits, AI Al-Qaeda in Indian subcontinent and Ansarullah Bangla team. There were reports that some militants disguised as religious teachers had sneaked into the state and silently gone ahead with their submersive and anti-state activities. Chief Minister Himanta Biswasarma said that some madrasa managements were not running the institution but were running a terrorist hub. Congress Interim President Sonia Gandhi's mother, Paola Maino, passed away at her home in Italy on Saturday, August 27. The funeral took place on Tuesday, August 30. Senior Congress leader Jairam Ramesh tweeted about the news. The Congress President had left on August 23 to visit her ailing mother, who was in her 90s. She is also slated to undergo medical checkup and treatment. Her son, Rahul Gandhi, and daughter, Priyanka Gandhi Vadra, has accompanied her. Rahul and Priyanka have visited their grandmother a number of times over the past few years. Sonia Gandhi was born in a town of 22,000 inhabitants on the outskirts of Torino in Italy. Suspended Jharkhand BJP leader Seema Patra was arrested by the Ranchi police today and was later sent to police remand till September 12 for torturing a tribal woman who worked as her house help. BJP had suspended Patra over allegations that she kept the woman captive for eight years and tortured her. The case was registered at Argora police station. 
The move came after a video went viral on social media where the tribal woman named Sunita could be seen narrating her ordeal. अरे इसे बना के कोई तो बना लिए तो बना ना As per reports, Patra is also the wife of a retired IAS officer and had allegedly kept the woman captive in her residence in Ranchi's Posh Ashoknagar area for the last several years. Jharkhand BJP leader Patra responded to the incident saying, These are false allegations, politically motivated allegations. I have been implicated. Meanwhile, Jharkhand BJP distanced itself from the leader saying she was also served a show cause regarding termination of the primary membership from the party. A committee has also been formed to inquire. After the committee submits its report, strictest action will be taken against them. In BJP, there is no place for such people. Acting on a tip-off from a government employee, the Ranchi police rescued the woman from Patras residence last week and got her statement recorded on Tuesday before the magistrate, sources said. Members of various tribal outfits visited the Rajendra Institute of Medical Sciences where the woman is undergoing treatment and met her. The general manager of the National SCST Hub, K.K. Sharma, has informed that the Union Minister of State for MSME, Bhanu Pratap Singh Verma, will be chairing the National SC or ST Hub Conclave in Manipur on September 2nd. The conclave is being organized by the Ministry of MSME to spread awareness about the NSSH scheme and other schemes of the ministry. Addressing the press conference at the Manipur Press Club, Sharma said it will also be a time to interact with aspiring and existing SC or ST entrepreneurs, industry associations and lending institutions to enhance participation of SCST MSCs in the industry in procurement. Uh, the objective of this event is to sensitize the SCST entrepreneurs of our state uh, for participation in public procurement. As you might be knowing that the National SST Hub scheme was launched by our Honorable Prime Minister in 2016. And uh, this scheme was as a part of a budget speech of 2015-16. Uh, National SST Hub scheme is our uh, uh, ministry's uh, uh, prime initiative. And uh, this is being implemented by National Small Industries Corporation. NSIC is an implementing agency. And uh, we are organizing such kind of mega events across the country to uh, create awareness and sensitize the assist entrepreneurs so that their participation in public procurement increases. Four times across India and two times abroad also. 
so these kind of direct intervention which can add to their capacity building has to be informed as many people as possible so we are requesting our media friend to attend this event and take benefit out of that themselves one secondly inform as many people as possible because here if a person is not taking this kind of uh, services or facility from government of india that only means he or she is not having this information KAM Meghalaya on Wednesday declared the candidature of Wan Pin Hun Karsin Tio from East Shillong constituency. Karsin Tio will contest against heavyweight Dr. M. Amparin Lingdo. Lingdo is a suspended Congress legislature. She is the third candidate of KAM. Earlier, KAM announced two candidates to contest 2023 Assembly poll. They are Karsoebor Purtu. Contesting from North Shillong and Angela Rangat from South Shillong. Today, we are very happy uh, from Kam Meghalaya to announce that um, in addition to our candidates from North and South Shillong, we have one more candidate from 16 East Shillong constituency, Kong Wanpanhun Kharsanthev, who will be contesting on the Kam Meghalaya platform. So Kong Wan Pinhun is a person who is no stranger actually because she has been somebody who has with the people worked for more than 20 years now. Uh, she is a person who is well educated but more than being well educated has a wealth of wisdom which has come from her work on the ground and uh, 16 East Shillong will benefit greatly from Kong Wan Pinhun as a candidate and we welcome the people of East Shillong to lend support to her campaign and to be part of this campaign. Uh, I am Kongwan Pinhun Kharsantia. Uh, I, I am residing in a locality called Ishnong Malki, uh, which falls under 16 East Shillong constituency. And uh, I also take the opportunity to declare my candidature uh, from the same constituency. I will be contesting as an independent candidate, but at the same time, uh, I also represent a platform called Kam Meghalaya, together with uh, Kong Angela and Baba Kursoi Borpurtu. Health Minister Dr. R. Lalthang Liana today inaugurated 10 ICU beds and other essential equipment funded by the HDFC Bank's Corporate Social Responsibility Program, Parivartan, at the Civil Hospital of Aizol. Speaking at the inaugural function in the doctor's seminar room, the minister expressed gratitude on behalf of the state government and the people of Mizoram to HDFC Bank. He requested HDFC officials to explore the possibility of extending the CSR program to other district hospitals in Mizoram. Honorable uh, Medical Superintendent, our Honorable Health and Family Welfare Minister, Dr. Lankhya, uh, the ICU presented from the uh, Nationalized Bank. I invite this. I am really grateful to do our part to build healthcare infrastructure in the country. He's oh. a part of us and he's our main anchor. He's ready. He is the head HDFC Bank to give introductions to his team. Family, uh, Honorable Medical Secretary Dr. Zoram Kanga. units conducting health camps, spreading awareness about nutrition. Providing two state governments on improving the healthcare infrastructure. The coronavirus in Mizoram to further extend this program after learning about the required key focus area for Parivartan. We believe in cooperation to take our efforts to the next level. Apart from the 10-bed ICU at the civil hospital, the HDFC Bank donated motorized ICU beds multi-para monitors, suction machines, BPAP machines, CPAP machines, ventilators and median transport ventilators to Lungle Civil Hospital and Siaha District Hospital on June 16, 2022. The bank also donated various equipments worth Rs. 13,75,000 to the government of Mizoram in her fight against COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. 
The bank also from time to time donates blood vents and other essential equipment to the Isol Bud Bank. A joint team of the Assam Rifles Field Intelligence Unit and the Vaivakon Police Station team during the previous night intercepted a bike at Huntar Veng near a petrol pump. The bike was being ridden by Ramdin Thara, 26, of Takting Damveng Aizwal and a Pilean rider, Lalrem Rati of Tuikwal South Aizwal. Upon checking, the team found three locally made 22 caliber pistols with a magazine and one disassembled locally met 22 rifle with a magazine. In this regard, the Vaivakon police station registered a case under 25 Section Arms Act. Further probe is on. That's all the news for this hour. Stay tuned and keep watching Hornbill TV.